battery, I have one, two, three, four, five, six cells. Six cells, no? Suppose that the voltage of each cell is 1.3. How much is 1.3 times six? Calculate it quickly. 1.5, sorry. 1.5 times six. Nine. It's nine volts. Let me check how much is the voltage in each cell in this battery. Okay. I have a. The, I am going to check in DC the voltage, the total voltage in between the positive and the negative. How much is that? It's 12.07. 12 point. Okay. And now the voltage in between the last cell and the last. 7, 1.8, 1.7 oh. fluctuates, so 1.7. 1.7 in each cell. So it's 10.2. Excuse me? 10.2. 10.2, okay, look. And uh, in between the last one and the second cell? Two. Two, yeah? If, if, you, if you go up, 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 at the end you have 12. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's because each cell is connected in series with the other one and the other one and the other one and the other one. For example, uh, in between the last terminal and uh, this cell. 9.7. 9.7. And uh, with this one. 12.7. 12. You see? It's mm -hmm. going up, up, up. You add it. Ah, oh, nice. Nice, nice that, that, that connection, no? Uh, each cell is connected in series with the other one, 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 and finally I have the 12 volts. Okay, the battery is a composition of cells, individual cells. Okay, what happens if one of the cells is damaged, is broken? The connection is serious. What happens if one of the middle cells here is broken? The battery is, is broken because it's in series. Ay, ay, ay. No? For that reason, uh, when the people test, when the people test the battery, we are going to do that procedure right now, uh, they verify cell by cell. Oh, look, this one is broken. For that reason, the battery is damaged. Can you fix it only that cell? No, my friend. I need to disassemble the battery and replace the, the LEDs, the, the, the plates of a LED. No, that's, that's not possible. You need to repair the battery completely, remove all the lead, all the acid, and put new, install new cells. Create a new battery, okay? If one cell is damaged, bingo, finito. That's, that's not good. Everybody follow me? Okay, we are going to try to check something. In each cell, I have plates, plates of lead. Depending on the thickness of the plates, the batteries store us more energy or less energy. If the thickness of the plate is thicker, the batteries store us a lot of energy and release the energy slowly. What type of battery is that battery? It store us a lot and release the energy slowly. Deep cycle. Deep cycle. Deep cycle. The second one. Deep cycle. Ah, but I have other battery with the, the plates, thinner plates. And store us energy, but release the energy faster. So what type of battery? Cranking. cranking batteries. Ah, okay. That's why the deep cycle batteries are heavy in comparison with the cranking. The crankings are a little lighter in comparison with the other one. Because the other one, the plates are thicker. Ah, good, no? <coughs> nice. Those are the, the main difference, no? In between deep cycle and cranking batteries. Cranking, cranking batteries, heavy cranking batteries like this one is exclusive for the inboard engines, diesel or gas, heavy engines, no? I need a lot of amps at the beginning, right? Okay, Th those are the, the, the different types. And the other difference in the batteries is the electrolyte. Uh, the, the most common battery, this one and this one, are lead acid. What is the meaning of that? I have electrolyte here and I have plates of lead. No, this is lead acid. There are other ones identical to this, but uh, internally, the liquid is not liquid, it's gel. Because they added additive, and it's not liquid, it's gel. This is good, because the gel, no spill. But the, the gel battery is, is a lead acid battery. 
and there are other ones exactly the same. 65% of acid, 35, yeah, uh, 65 of water, 35 of acid, but they added silica, powder of silica, and the silica absorbed the water with the acid. <coughs> this is the AGN, absorbent glass material. But it's basically the same. It's acid with water plus silica to absorb the liquid. And it's the, right now, the liquid is not liquid, it's not gel, it's, it's powder, wet powder, and it's good electrolyte. Uh, in sailboats, in catamarans, they prefer, in boats, in general, the people prefer AGM or gel because with the movement of the boat, you, you don't have spills of acid. That's okay? We are going to check the voltage of one individual cell, the first, the first cell. Six. Yeah. All right. That's this is the maximum in each cell. All right. Look at this. When the battery is fully charged, the maximum voltage per cell should be around 2.12. And this is an indication that the battery is fully charged. Look at this. If I have in one cell, I check the voltage of the cell, and uh, the voltage of the cell is 2.0. The battery is 60% charged. That's incredible. No? The people say, no, the voltage in each cell is two. It's okay. No, my friend. The level of charge in the battery is 60%. Look at this. Some people say, my battery is perfect. Yes, it's perfect. C can you check? What is the voltage of the battery? It's 12.2, 12.1. Look at this. 12.2, 12.1. The battery is around 50% of the charge. And the people normally say, I have 12 volts, that's perfect. 12 volts, the battery is 50% charge. It's in the limit to be the charge. Ah, what should be the voltage in a, in a normal battery fully charged? Around 12.7, 12.6, 12.7. Less of that, oh, 12.5. It's 90% charge. 12.0, 12.0, 50% charge. No, my battery is a little discharged. It's 11.7. 11.7 is 30%. Your battery is practically that. Wow. No, it's a little discharged. No, my friend, 11.7 is practically finished. Okay, this is only using, using the voltmeter, and remember, the voltmeter is <coughs> not a good indicator to check the battery. The battery should be verified with the load test, and right now we are going to play with the load test. Anybody? Now we are going to to think in a boat, in a in a in a pleasure boat, 65 feet. How many battery banks are in a typical pleasure yacht? Five, around five, four, six groups. One group. Other group? House. House. Other group? Stern, bow. Bow thrusters. Other group? Generators. Other group? Electronics. Electronics. Those are the most common. No? Probably the people say, no, I have other group for the, the solar system. Oh, okay. Yeah? But it's around six group of buttons. What is the secret when I have different group of batteries in my boat. The secret, the tip number one. All negative should be All the negative, negative, I have one. this group here connected in series or parallel, no problem, blah, blah, blah. The output positive and the output negative, no? And I have other group here, output positive, output negative, other here, other here, other here. Six group of batteries. All the negatives should be connected together in a common negative boost bar. The negatives should be connected together. Doesn't matter if this group of battery is lead acid, the other group of batteries is gel, the other group of batteries is AGM, no, no problem. Doesn't matter if this group of batteries is 12 volts, this one is 24, this is 12, 24, 12, 24. All the negatives should be connected together. Anybody follow me? Why? Why? A signal for any electronic 
to receive the signal. One Pay attention. We are going to do a simple example. Suppose, suppose that I am in the pilot hand or in the fly bridge. I am the captain. Anybody follow me? I am going to try to start the engines with the ignition switch on the pilot hand. Ready? Pay attention. The start motor, the start motor of the engine, where is located? On the engine. And the start motor, the motor of the start motor receives power from what group of batteries? The cranking battery is pretty close to the engine over there. Yes or no? The big red cable enter in the in the solenoid of the star motor. You remember that? Okay. The signal, the signal to activate that solenoid is coming from the ignition switch located over there in the pilot hand. Excuse me. The ignition switch over there, that ignition switch receives the signal from what group of batteries? Excuse me? House battery bank or electronics. One of those. Ah! And I send that signal, that signal, that signal to the solenoid. And the solenoid and activate the motor. Yes or not? Sure. Ah, excuse me. If the negative of that group of batteries, house batteries, is not connected with the this group, cranking batteries, can I send that signal? Can I send the signal? No, because the negatives are not connected and I don't close the loop. <coughs> wow. This is a typical complaint. Oh, my engine start, if I start the engine directly on the engine, but in the pilot hand, nothing. You enter with an alligator cable, connect the negative. Oh, I start! The negatives are not connected. In other words, the negatives in any part of the boat are the same. It's common. Doesn't matter if I am using this group of batteries, for that group of batteries, the negatives are the same. I can close the loop in any part of the boat. Everybody follow me? Yep, nice. It's clear, no? And don't forget, doesn't matter if this group of batteries is lead acid and the other one is AGM and the other one is lead. No problem, no problem. At the end of the day, doesn't matter the material of the battery, the, the group is 12 or 24 or 36 and the voltage is the same. <coughs> Ready? Good? Okay. The situation now, we are going to play a little with this type of a, of a, of a board. This is the board that we are going to do here. This is the laboratory that we are going to create. Each three people uh, will be responsible for the design of one board. And we are going to connect the boat completely. This is a complete boat. Because we have the star motor, we have the alternator here, uh, we have the fan, we have uh, uh, all the instruments, oil pressure, temperature sensor, uh, tachometer, tachometer. Uh, we are going to connect everything. This is the boat, navigation light. This is the boat. Uh, bilge pumps. Yeah. This is a. Is that the ACR? Yeah, the ACR. And the, and, and the battery charger. We have everything here. If you do that project, you are ready to do the wiring in a small boat DC. Uh, we are going to start with cranking battery. No, oh, over there. Yeah. Oh, towards me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But cranking battery. And we are going to talk about those three, those, those three information that you have in the label of the battery. In my opinion, the information that you need every day, every day, every day is the amps per hour and the CCA. Now we are going to talk about both of them. What is the meaning of amps per hour? What is the meaning of amps per hour? The amount of amps per CCA. Correct. What is the capacity of the battery to store as energy? And what is the capacity of the battery to deliver that energy in amps per hour? How many amps per hour pass for that point in one second? For one hour or one minute? It's flow, it's flow. Ah, okay, for example, this battery, this battery is uh, 100 amps per hour. But normally in the label of the battery, I don't know why, they don't mention the amps per hour. They say reserve capacity, 180. They don't mention amps per hour. Uh, but uh, I, I 
I say in the book that uh, you can multiply, you can multiply the the reserve capacity zero times reserve capacity times zero point four one six is equal amps per hour. That's okay. How much is one eighty times zero point zero point forty one, please? Seventy three point eight. Seventy two. Seventy yeah, seventy two. Uh, well, the 74. capacity of that battery is seventy two amps per hour. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's okay. It's seventy amps per hour. That's the capacity of that battery. I don't know why they they, they put reserve capacity instead of amps per hour. You need the information about amps per hour. But that is simple. You multiply reserve capacity times zero point forty one and it's seventy two. That's okay. Right? Uh, I'm getting 74. 74? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of uh, your Mickey Mouse calculator. No, I, I was trying to say 74, and you were like 72. I was like 74. No, no. Hello, Kitty calculator. All right. But is in the future, look, I memorize because 0 0.41 is complicated. I say 0 0.5. Okay, reserve capacity. Half is amps per hour, approximately. What is half of a 180? It's 75. Yeah, half. Or forget 0 0.41. 0 0.5. Good? It's simple, no? Half of the reserve capacity is the amps per hour. Finish. Okay. This is, this is, uh, uh, but it's okay. All right. This is the information that you need. Let me explain why, because in a couple of minutes we are going to play with that. Because in some cases, you need collect 600 amps. You need a battery bank of 12 volts and 600 amps. And you have only batteries of that capacity. Pay attention. You need a battery bank of 12, 600 amps. How many batteries you need over there and how should be connected those batteries? You need 600 amps and, uh, and 12 volts. In series? In series? In parallel, Dr. Garfield. Because in series, you increase the voltage. Should be in parallel. How many batteries? How many batteries in parallel? Eight batteries, no? This is, this is a parallel connection. This is a parallel connection, no? Suppose that you connect eight of these. How much is the output voltage and the output amps? The, the output voltage should be 12, because it's in parallel, no? And uh, if you have eight batteries, how much is the total amps? Each battery is 75 amps. 75 amps. 75 amps, 75 amps, 75 amps. How much? If you multiply 75 times 8, 600. 600. Okay, perfect, perfect. I need a battery. Finito. In parallel. Good? So by bigger batteries, you have less. Or, or I can buy one battery like this. This is 12 volts, 850 amps with one. Have fun carrying that. Ah, but you need a man like me. <laughs> <laughs>